Welcome back. So, as we're on the cusp of the draft and then free agency, one comment we're going to see a lot this summer, that NHLers are spoiled millionaires. These are spoiled players. How dare they? How dare they demand these multi-million dollar contracts? I liked it better when players didn't get millions of dollars, which is fine. I mean, if, if not for the fact that if the players don't get it, then the owners do. And hey, the owners are right there with you. Uh, owners suppressed the amount of money that players got paid for decades. It went into the 70s, and if not for the WHA, it would have continued for longer. Now, by now, we would have seen NHL salaries go up. We probably still would have been in the same situation. But, yeah, NHL owners really didn't want to pay the players money and have always known that if they come out and say, man, these players are being greedy, in general, the public's probably going to go, yeah, these players are greedy. Why did they get all that money? Because they're the talent. Like, without them, you wouldn't have a league. So, anyways, um, according to the most recent numbers I was able to find over the last year, uh, 551,000 kids in the U.S. play youth hockey, 513,000 kids in Canada play youth hockey, but those numbers vary wildly, and, and I don't know how accurate that is for the entire country, right? And this is organized. This is your organized registered hockey. This is not including kids who might go out and play in whatever league that they have that may not be registered with USA Hockey or Hockey Canada, right? So it, it, it is a sport that we we do see a lot of participation in, but it's down. So the numbers have been down since the pandemic for obvious reasons. Everything got shut down uh, at the Canadian level for a while there. And on the American side, some of the programs were down as well. And so while the numbers have bounced back, they're not where they were in 2019. Part of it is cost. I mean, everything with inflation being as it is, and it's all over North America, all globally, really, inflation has been an issue. And it has not um, it has not made things easier for hockey parents. Uh, for hockey parents, this is the most expensive team sport to play. Um, it's not the most expensive sport overall, but it's team sport it is. Uh, the most expensive sport overall apparently is water skiing. So the average cost, I believe these are Canadian numbers I pulled, sixteen hundred and sixty six dollars average annually for youth hockey. Water skiing is number one. Equestrian. $1,434. So, you know, when you, when you have a kid that's that's in equestrian, it's like, oh, your family's got some money. Kid goes out and ride the horses, huh? Uh, hockey now is, is in that situation, too, where you kind of got to have some money. So, for parents, there's trade-offs. And, and these trade-offs are not small. This is something that happens with kids that are being raised who may not make it to professional hockey, not to mention the NHL. For the NHL, that dream is a distant, distant, distant one. Uh, and most players will not get there. Most players will not get close to the National Hockey League. And we'll, we'll go through the various North American leagues. I'm just, and I'm just looking at North America. I'm not even looking at the European side. So hockey parent trade-offs in Canada. So this is Canadian parents being asked, so what have you had to give up for your kid to be in hockey? 67% uh, have said fewer vacations. 63% uh, cheaper groceries and entertainment, so I'd like to take the kids out to the movies. However, I got a kid in hockey. I can't afford to, that kind of thing. 35% have had to take on more personal debt, so maxing out credit cards happens. You're buying hockey equipment. It can be very expensive. 23% um, have had to get a second job or work some overtime at their current job. 14% uh, work longer or delay retirement. And that's just, I, I hate to hear anybody delays retirement. I can't imagine. I'm going to retire. You know what? Nope. I'm going to work another five years. 12% uh, have had to sell personal possessions. So I'm thinking, you know, some pretty major possessions if it's going to make a difference to the hockey side of things. 9% have had to borrow from family members. That can be awkward if you're not able to pay that back, right? Because life's expensive right now. 9% cut back on money set aside for child's education. So that's tough. Uh, and it, it has to be tough too, because just imagine if you're a kid and if, if you know that your parents had money set aside for college, but now they've put it into your hockey, well, now there's more pressure on you to do a little better at your hockey. And 2% have had to downsize to a smaller home. It said smaller house, but I'm thinking not everybody lives in a house. There are people who'd have to downsize to a condo or to an apartment, right? So it, there are a lot of sacrifices being made by parents of these kids who come up and then it's just, oh, they're all spoiled millionaires. How dare they? All right. 
Now, uh, there are academies in Canada for elite players. I know there are programs in the States for really good players too, the National Development Team Program. Uh, on the Canadian side, the tuition can cost eighteen to $22,000 a year. So it's not cheap. And that's where you're going to have some of the elite players. And so the, the better the player is, the more expensive it can be to the parents. So it really prices out poor kids. It prices out middle class too. And so it prices out a lot of kids who could be elite athletes. And we've talked about, you know, in Canada, is that dominance dropping off? Well, cost might be part of it. Cost could absolutely cause that to happen where Canadian hockey players who could end up being a Sidney Crosby, Connor McDavid type, their parents are poor. They can't play. And so that's there. Now, there are programs in Canada that help to support kids. The Tim Hortons hockey comes to mind as one. And there are various other programs that help kids that have trouble with cost. But it's still there. Those costs are still there and it's still tough. Um, and so, yeah, the cost is an issue. Now, there were 1,004 skaters in the NHL this year, 119 goalies. I got that number. It might be off by a couple, but it still shows you have a little over 1,000 players in the NHL. So you've got about a million kids in North America. Again, I'm not including Europe playing hockey. So if you add globally, it'd probably double that number. There are a thousand jobs that those kids are all aspiring towards. And so for players who play in the NHL, they're the elite. This is why I don't insult players in the NHL. This is why I don't talk about players in the NHL say this guy's trash and that guy's trash. And because you're not trash if you make it to the National Hockey League. You are one of the best players in the world if you make it to the National Hockey League. Now, your standing in relation to the rest of your teammates may not be very high. Maybe you are the 23rd best player on your team out of 23 players. But you're still better than tens, hundreds of thousands of other players globally. And you're still getting that opportunity. And so when we look at where the players' salaries are at, it shows the National Hockey League is where you have to go if you want to get paid. Uh, NHL's average salary, $2.69 million a year. The KHL is the next highest paid league at $425,000. Uh, that's the average there. The National League, which is Swiss, $228,000 on average. Uh, the Swedish Hockey League, $110,000 on average. These numbers are all in U.S. dollars. And Liga, which is Finland, $100,000. So um, I'm not saying those are bad numbers, but comparatively speaking with what NHLers make, that's that's low, right? And again, that's the average. So you're going to have players who make a lot more than $100,000 in Liga, and you're going to have players who make plenty less as well. So that's that's where we're at. Now, when you get into how many professional leagues there are, the NHL is the top. Right now, I've talked about the AHL plenty. The AHL, of course, is the feeder league for the NHL. You can make a good living in the AHL. You can absolutely, you can make a good living in the AHL. You can get paid 50, 60 grand US a year. Is that going to make you rich for the rest of your life? No. Uh, but you're you're getting that payment over like an eight-month period. You might need a job in the off-season, sure, depending on whether you're a veteran or not. Uh, but I don't begrudge any of the AHL players for wanting a little bit higher of a downside on their contract either when it turns into one hundred and thirty dollars or $150,000 in the AHL. Um, ECHL, I talked about them not too long ago and how you can make you know $500 a week, which is not great. You're going to need another job. You're absolutely you're going to need another job, uh, especially if you have a wife and kids. Uh, $500 a week won't cut it. Uh, the SPHL is a league below. You're looking at probably a couple hundred dollars a week or or less. And the SPHL, it's it's a shorter season. And I, I mean, the SPHL has some really fun stuff going on with it. Their playoff format's great and everything, but it is that fourth league down. So the prices that they're gonna they're gonna make less. And the FPHL, which is the the lowest league and and is seen as kind of the the closest to slap shot you're going to find in the NHL. Uh, but the FPHL, the pay is, is lower than it is in the SPHL. So again, for these players, they're still paid. This is still paid hockey. This is still pro hockey. But yeah, you're you're not looking at uh, the kind of money that, uh, that you're going to get even in the ECHL to play there. Now, both the SPHL and the FPHL have free agent tryouts so like you can go and try out for for a team on this in this league but uh it's recommended you don't a it's at your own cost and b unless you've talked to the general manager and they have some interest unless you have something on your resume that says hey i can play pro hockey you're probably not going to get a look so there are a lot of players that 
don't end up making it into the National Hockey League. And by a lot, I mean most. Very, very few players are going to get to the NHL. And then you look at the length of their 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 actual career. So the top 25% of players, the average career at this point, 12 years. So the average career for your top-notch guys, 12 years. You have 12 years to make your money on average, and then you're out. How many players have we seen that get a career-ending injury, so their career is just done, that last contract is it, maybe it's during a contract year, and so you're out. And they might get other jobs in the NHL. They might get a job as a trainer. They might get a job as a scout. They're not going to make the same money they did as a player, obviously. And the average overall overall career is 410 games in the NHL, which to me seems kind of high. It, it felt like it wasn't that long ago that the, the average career was 164 games or 200 games. But we have, we have more teams now, maybe, you know, with better conditioning, uh, players are lasting a little longer than they used to. But still, this is something you're doing in your 20s. The average retirement age is 28 to 30. Most players don't come out publicly and say, yeah, I've decided to retire from the National Hockey League because they're maybe they don't have an NHL contract offer. Their agent hasn't called them in a while. So there's not really much point in officially retiring from the National Hockey League when there isn't a lot of interest there. So it is, it is a game that is very expensive to play. It is a game that is very tough on the body. Uh, players that retire that their knees are gone, their back is done. Um, players who, when they're done, they just they won't skate anymore. They won't go out there and play. And they they you know even the um, when they have the alumni games, they just they can't because they they gave everything they had at the NHL level. So that's why I don't have any qualms about saying I d I don't see NHL players as being exceedingly greedy. And when you look at the amount of money that NHL players get, and you compare it to other leagues, and I know I did a video on this a couple weeks ago. I know people are going to say, well, those leagues make more money. Right. But still, when you compare it with the money that's made in other leagues, yeah, hockey players, I, I can't qualify them as being greedy. Um, do they sometimes get more money than they should? Yes. Which I have said for years, I put that on the general manager. Uh, the, the example I've always said is if I sat down in my boss's office and said, I'd like to have my pay tripled. My boss is like, all right, I'll triple your pay. Was it my fault for asking or his fault for giving it to me? And then if that makes it difficult for him to round out the rest of the staff, because all of a sudden the company's losing money because I'm making three times the amount of money that I was before, is that on me or is it on him? It's on the manager. So to me, when a team has trouble with its cap, I look at the GM. I don't look at the players and say, well, clearly he took too much money. So how dare he be that greedy? I, I really see it as a player sits down. And most of us in that situation do the same thing. If we could sit down in a negotiation and say, can I get $2 million a year? And somebody goes, yep, I think we'd take it. I, I don't think we would say, oh, I was, I'm just kidding. I'll take like, I don't know, 30 bucks an hour. I don't, that millions of dollars a year sounds great, but ah, no, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do, I don't want to seem greedy. <laughs> you're, you're dancing as you leave the office, right? So really, I, I don't have a problem with it. I know that I think when Patrick Kane was drafted, I think his mother, his parents said they'd gone through over $100,000 to get him there. Uh, Matt Duchesne, for his parents to get him to the NHL level, it cost them $300,000. In excess of $300,000. So when I see Duchesne making millions and millions, I'm thinking, yeah, his parents made a really heavy investment I, I would imagine that most NHL players uh, are very giving to their parents and, and make sure that they're well taken care of because the parents sacrificed a lot to get them there. So again, I, I know that we'll see a lot of comments about how greedy players are and everything, which to me is, it, it is what it is. But I don't see ticket prices dropping anytime soon. I don't see the NHL owners... Uh, dropping down a bunch of their their prices and in, in for merchandise and everything else, and so yeah, I I really don't have the, pro the a problem with the players making what they do. It is a short career. It is a dangerous sport, and they're the elite. They are the absolute tip top athletes in the world playing their sport. Uh, when I see people talking about, oh, it'd be easy to play hockey. Give it a shot. Go ahead, give it a shot. It is one of those rare sports where you have to master one skill before you even play it. You have to know how to skate before you really have that whole hockey thing going. And uh, that it's not easy. It is absolutely, it is not an easy sport. 
Um, skating can be can be very very rough. Uh, it, I, and I know when I was learning how to skate, it it just it's brutal on the ankles. But at any rate. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And I just wanted to put this up here because I know in a few weeks we're going to have the hey, everybody's greedy. The NHL players are so greedy. Why are they so greedy? They're elite athletes. It's very expensive to become an NHL player. The league's making $6 billion this year. The players are entitled to half of the money that the NHL makes. So... That's that's just the long and short of it, and that's what the NHLPA negotiated, and I don't have a problem with it. Uh, the the owners can make tens, hundreds of millions of dollars a year. No one bats an eye. So if a player wants to make ten million in a year, and a GM says I'll give it to you, I have no problem with it. But let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. For all your support, I will talk to you again soon.